Welcome to Farm Charm Chic. I'm Emily. In today's episode, I put together some of my favorite Dollar Tree wood DIYs. Now, sometimes these DIYs get shuffled around and lost in some of my other videos, so I thought it would be a really great idea to compile them all together so if you were specifically looking for Dollar Tree DIYs, they were very easy to find. So sit back and enjoy and get some great ideas. Let's go make some DIYs. I absolutely love making risers and this is one of my favorites I've ever done. And this is all Dollar Tree products. You can see all of the different things that I used here. Now this piece that I'm opening here is completely decorative and optional. If you want to keep this under like that $5 price point, you could definitely remove that piece, but it really does add a fun, uh, nice little decorative element to it. Now, I made one of these in one of my recent videos. I did a laser video and I used a file and cut one out and made it with my laser. And I thought, how can I make this so everybody could make it? You wouldn't have to have a laser to make it. And the one I made was really small and I thought, I want a bigger one. I loved it so much. So this was kind of just a brainchild. I've seen other people do these with some different Dollar Tree products, but I just love that this is all wood. It's so sturdy and it's gonna definitely be something I use for a really long time. So you can kind of see all of these different products that I use here. This is a shelf pack that came with two pieces of wood. I decided to only use one of the pieces and this base here you can use either one of the square drawers or this is a pencil holder uh, one is a little bit wider one's a little bit taller I chose to go with the pencil holder that was a little bit taller but any wooden box is gonna work use your imagination I mean I kind of sat and just came up with different pieces that would work for this now this little shelf had some holes in the edge and we definitely don't want those so I'm just using some spackling to fill those holes in and then I'm just using my fingernail file to smooth those out that way you don't even tell that they're there. Now I'm going to use some wood glue on each of these different layers here. So I'm just putting some on this. And again, this little piece is just a decorative piece, but it really does add such a beautiful element to it. And we're making a riser that looks like a vintage scale. Uh, and so it looks really fun. And a lot of those vintage scales did have that kind of shape on them uh, as that decorative piece there. Now this is gonna be the face of the scale where the little dial is. So I'm gluing a couple of, I do a stack of four tumbling tower blocks and then another one here. The reason for this is I want this to be kind of at an angle, but I need contact points to be able to glue this on. So you'll see when I set this up against the pencil holder here, that it kind of sits at an angle there. And so you're gonna glue each of those tumbling tower blocks. And this is what helps give it some support and some contact uh, space for the glue. I'm just fitting everything together to see kind of where I want the spacing to look and how it looks. And you can kind of see exactly where that dial would go. And I decide that works. Now, this part, you can kind of use your imagination or creativity, but you need to come up with something to help uh, lift up the uh, portion of the scale that your items would sit on. So I had a little wood um, square. You could use a plunger handle from Dollar Tree. I just have a leftover piece from a dowel. You could use tumbling tower blocks to do this. Uh, so many different options, but just something to help prop up this top portion of the scale to give my little dowel a little bit of security and a little bit more uh, contact surface with the plate that's sitting on the top. I glue a couple of tumbling tower blocks with some wood glue to it just to kind of give a little bit of stability. If I had it to do over again, I would probably go up through the pencil holder and glue it to that and drill up through it with like a screw to give it a little bit even more stability or drill down from that. Like somehow I would have drilled uh, into this particular piece rather than the way I did it. It's fine. It's sturdy. It's going to hold. Um, but especially if you're going to resell this, I probably would do that. But if you're just making this for yourself, and I mean, really, it, it would hold fine. I just am giving you a little bit of a different option there. Uh, even some tumbling tower blocks making a cute like X or something, I think would give a little bit more stability to it as well. But I'm just going to glue this top piece onto that pencil holder once I have it glued down. 
and then I tried to find the heaviest thing I could to stack and balance on this to help get that wood glue to hold and to dry with a really firm contact. So I was able to stack this bunch of plates on there. I mean, there's several plates there, it was heavy. So now I printed off, just getting on Google, I found some free scale dial images. Uh, so you just go to Google search and type in scale, print, scale face printable, and this is what came up. And there was a couple different options. And then I just printed them out. Um, I sized them in Canva to the size of my circle. And then I'm just using a glue stick here to get this uh, scale face adhered. So just a liberal amount of glue, and then I uh, will place that on. Right here, I'm just making sure that I get it um, positioned correctly and it's not going to be like crooked or anything. So I leaned my scale face up against the scale. Now I will put the colors of spray paint that I used in the uh, description, but this is called, I believe it's leafy green. That is by Rust-Oleum. It is a beautiful color. It reminds me, it's not quite an avocado green, but very reminiscent of that green color they used back in the industrial era with all of the different scales. Not quite like tractor green, but a really good in between. Uh, and I've loved it for my projects this spring, but I believe it's called Leafy Green and it's by Rust-Oleum. And again, I'll leave that in my description box for you. Now I just kind of sanded off any excess paper that went over the edge on my scale. And then since it is paper and may have that white edge, I'm just going around with my Sharpie to cover up any white that's showing so it blends seamlessly into the scale circle there, into that circle so it all looks like it was meant to be like this. I've become a fan of using my heat press now that I have one just to give a little bit of an extra um, way to adhere this. And I do love the bond that comes with this. It helps get any wrinkles or anything out. That's totally optional. I just had my heat press heated up so I thought I would try it. And I'm putting some Mod Podge on here. This is matte Mod Podge, but you could use gloss or satin. It doesn't matter, just as kind of the finish you want, but you're just going to seal off that scale face. And then using some Gorilla Glue, you could even use hot glue to do this portion here. I was just trying to not have the extra thick hot glue, but I just put that on the edge of my Jenga blocks or the tumbling tower blocks. And that's what's going to glue to my pencil holder there to get that scale face glued on. Now you don't have to go overboard with distressing, but I definitely feel like this needs a little bit of a black around even just the edges. You can do the lightest touch, just something to give some definition to the edges. Um, it's just kind of all stark, one color, one dimensional. So I do a little bit of distressing after I do the edges, but I definitely feel like something needs to be done on this edges to give it a little bit more uh, dimension and a little bit more embellishing. I kind of was trying to mimic what it would look like if the scale had been used for years. So on the top of it, I feel like items would have been placed on a scale and drug off. So I felt like it would have been a little bit worn out looking on the top of there. Maybe the paint had faded or chipped on that. And then all around the detail of the different edges where that kind of scroll work is on that base piece, I pay attention there just kind of all over Again, it's kind of just a matter of personal preference on this, but I would definitely bare minimum do the edges. I'm thinking that it looks pretty good there. You can kind of see all around all different angles there, but here is when it's styled. Is this not the cutest thing? I love how this turned out. And I feel like this is so sturdy. It's not made out of like plastic pieces that I've seen some of the other faux scales made out of. I really feel like this is something that would last for years. To me, it looks like something I would have found like at the back of my grandma's kitchen cabinet that maybe she had used to weigh her different things in her kitchen, like used as a meat scale or something. I don't know, but I just really feel like this is such a great addition for a farmhouse kitchen to have something really cute displayed. It's definitely a different take on a riser. I would really love to know what you guys think of this one. 
This piece is really simple and it doesn't take a whole lot of time to create and it's really, really pretty. And I just have these pieces from Dollar Tree. So I'm showing you five pieces here. If you wanna make a base out of like this leftover piece right here, it's, that's totally optional. I just wanted to keep this under that $5 price point. And now that it's a dollar twenty-five, not a dollar, we're working with four items, <laughs> not five. So I have two of the square pieces and two of the like picket fence or house looking pieces. These came from the crafter square section at Dollar Tree. They have them in this finish and there's also like a white finish. You can also paint it to be any color that you would like. I'm going to leave mine this natural color today. Now I'm just taking my heat tool to help heat up the adhesive on the back of these price stickers that are on here, the little barcode stickers. It's just an easy way to remove these, uh, to use like your little putty knife there or your fingernail and get under there and then just be careful not to burn your fingers because I've done that a time or two. And so, but you're just heating that up and it just peels right off and it leaves very minimal um, adhesive on there. If it does leave a little bit of the adhesive or you just want to kind of blend that in a little bit more, just run a little emery board over it or sanding, you know, some sandpaper to kind of help get that off and remove that. And it just kind of helps it so there's no residue left behind. Mind. Now I'm taking the two, we're just going to call them a house piece, even though they're kind of like a picket fence, or I think they're supposed to be kind of like a house, but we're taking the two house pieces and we're going to place them against the side pieces here. You want your side pieces to be on the outside. See how I slip this piece on the inside there? Because you don't want any rough edges to show when you're looking at this head on if you're looking at it from the, a house facing you. Now I'm just using some E6000 glue. I feel like this works a little bit better than hot glue, but like some Gorilla Glue would work great. Some of the Dollar Tree Super Glue would work great. Uh, I just like the gel consistency of the E6000 here to make sure that I'm getting a good bond. But any type of like adhesive that you're used to using. So I put that on all three sides and then I'm just going to set that off to the side there and then put some glue on my other one so I can work fairly quickly once I have this done. This is why I don't think hot glue would work the best because I feel like it would break down over time and I feel like sometimes if it dries a little bit it gets a little clumpy and I don't want that happening with this. I want this to look as clean and precise as I can. Now I'm just going to, now I realized here quickly that I placed the outside of this piece on the inside. So when you're doing this and putting it together, just make sure you have all of the outside pieces that have that kind of planked wood look on the outside. And you can do this with any wood pieces. I mean, say you had like a couple pieces of picket fence or some scrap wood in your garage, you could definitely cut these down and make this. You wouldn't have to use uh, anything from Dollar Tree. If you already had some scrap wood, it would be a free project for you to make. So I'm just fitting these together very nicely here, making sure that I line all of the edges up. You do have a little bit of movement with that E6000 that you can kind of scoot any of the pieces around as you need. Now I love these clamps. These are some of my favorite clamps. I have them in a couple of different sizes and it really helps to get that pressure and leave that on until that E6000 dries. And then this is going to be a pretty permanent fixture here. So I'm just going to line the sides up on this side now and I'm going to place another one of these clamps and I'm just making sure that the sides line up the best because I want this to look, I mean, if you decide you're gonna sell these or anything like that, you definitely want the most professional look. So just take your time and make sure uh, that everything looks really nice and clean there and so then I just squeeze this other set of clamps on here and I leave this overnight to dry and you can kind of see here I need to kind of scoot that in a little bit more push it down make sure that's got a really even you have a little bit like I say with that e6000 a little bit of movement to do that and then these clamps just squeeze on here to have that really nice firm tight and again I just leave this overnight give it one last little squeeze there so it can dry completely so the next day I come back and I'm going to remove these clamps and there's a little trigger on them that you just kind of pull and that releases the tension. They're very easily to operate and then they just slide off. I just pick these up like at Home Depot or Lowe's. You can order them on Amazon. They're pretty easy to find at any type of home decor store or not home decor store, but home improvement store. Now just showing you how sturdy this box is. It is not going anywhere. That E6000 worked great to give this the uh, bond that it needed. I'm going to go over this with a little bit of a fingernail file you guys know me you know I love to distress things so whether you paint this or whether you distress it leave it as it is anyway it's going to be beautiful 
This has a little bit of grooves in it to kind of have it look like planks of wood. So it really does kind of help those pop when you sand around them. You can kind of see, I'll show you. I just think it looks really nice and kind of has a good rustic touch. If you were to sell these, you could do several different finishes, see which sold best for you. But I'll just repeat that same process around the entire piece. Now I'm just going to stick any plant that you've got at home or any type of greenery or anything like that. This is just like a little planter box for you. And so it's going to be really cute and really nice. However, I have this piece of rope. I had some extra rope lying around from another project. I'm just going to spray it with some water and kind of pull it taut and then let it dry flat so I can get that little kink that was in there out of it. Now you don't have to do the rope. This is totally optional. It, it, don't go out and buy it. It's going to take you over that $5 budget. But if you happen to have some laying around your house or in your garage or something, you just need maybe like not even quite a foot like 10 inches maybe of it and I just tied it in a knot on either end I'm going to place this in here and glue it down with some hot glue and I'm going to glue it onto either side on the inside and then to have this hold in place until that glue dries I just use a couple of my little Dollar Tree clamps I love these things do you guys use these in your crafting they come in a couple different sizes and I feel like I use them all the time but that's just going to help those that rope stay in place and get a good bond there now you're not going to be carrying this by the rope however if you were to sell this somebody might think like oh I can carry this by the rope and you don't want it coming off this the glue does give a really good bond but I do go in with my staple gun and I just give it a staple on each side just make sure your staples are deep enough to go through the rope and the wood there um, you could even look how cute this looks with the plant in there you could even drill like a hole um, like on either side like right here you could draw drill a hole on either side and have the rope come through and tie on the knot on the outside or the inside that would be really cute but look at how beautiful this is it was a very simple project it did not take much time at all and I think for the impact and the size of this piece for being less than five dollars is great and of course if you were to sell these you wouldn't have to put a plant in them you could display it with a plant and show because a lot of people a lot of us especially crafters have a lot of greenery laying around our house that you could just stick in here but for different seasons to tuck into on a shelf I think this is just beautiful what do you guys think of this piece do you like this one if you have a stash or pick up these little pallets from Dollar Tree's crafting area and wonder what to do with them, I have the best DIY for you here. This is by far my favorite Dollar Tree DIY ever. So I am using nine of these and I'm going to make a tray with them. So I'm just using a combination of wood glue and super glue, just the super glue and wood glue I got from Dollar Tree. And I'm just kind of alternating. The super glue gives it more of a, a, a like quick hold, if that makes sense here, while it lets the wood glue dry. So that's why I decided to use that. I don't love using hot hot glue in instances like this where I need the pieces to fit together tight because I feel like sometimes the hot glue will dry in between and they'll kind of be like a space or something. So I'm just using these and I glue three together end to end and then I do that for each of my three rows. So that will take care of all nine of my little pallets here. And so as you can see, I have all three rows done here. And then I'm just using uh, to kind of space my wood glue out there and kind of fill in the gaps with the super glue. And I will glue these three rows together using the same method here. To get these to fit together very securely, I am using some clamps. You can sit and hold them for that super glue to dry, but I found that the clamps worked the best. These four wooden signs are from Dollar Tree also, and I'm using them for the edges of our tray. And I'm just showing you here that this bottom is very secure. It is not going to fall apart. So now I just need to measure the edges so I know exactly where to mark on all of my signs to cut. Now you can use a handsaw or a miter saw, whatever you use to cut. And then I did drill a couple of holes in these. And as you can see, I ended up having to use a little bit of spackling because it's like a compressed wood. It's not like solid wood, if that makes sense. And so it kind of tore a little bit when my drill went through. So just a little spackling over that. Now I just use my super glue and my wood glue to glue those sides down first. And then I am going to glue these other edges, the front and back in. And if you saw me there, I made sure to put super glues on the edge of those pieces as well as the bottom part so that way all of my surfaces that are touching are well glued together. Now at first I was just going to do one base coat of chalk paint because all of those signs are different colors and I was kind of using this as a primer coat and then I was going to spray paint it. I ended up just doing the whole thing with chalk paint in my studio and I really do like how it turned out. But just know that you have to go in between each of these palettes with a little detail brush to make sure that those are all painted in between. So it takes a little bit of love and effort and time here. Uh, spray paint may do a little bit quicker of a job for you, but I'm just letting you know how it was. But I'm so pleased with how this 
this came out i'm so happy that i did take the time to do this so just that little detail brush in between each of those now i do decide to distress mine because you guys know i love that that is totally my style and when i've seen these in the store they have had kind of that distressed finish so i'm just using some antiquing wax on a chip brush i will dip my antiquing wax in and then i will wipe it off a little bit on a paper towel and then just lightly brush over the areas there so I did the inside of my tray first and then I go through on all of the edges and make sure that they're well covered as well. You just want to make sure that if you're doing a distressing finish like this, you want to make sure all of the areas are covered. So the inside of the tray, the outsides of the tray, outside sides, if that makes sense here. And then I kind of go along the edges like I'm doing right here. I feel that that gives a little bit of definition to the edges as well and really helps it to look really good. And it just, I just love how it turns out. Now I'm using a little bit of the rope from Dollar Tree and I am just going to put a little painter's tape on the edge so I can feed it through where I drilled my whole Holes. If you didn't want to drill holes on here, you could easily super glue some like door handles or something onto the edge of this. If you don't have like the tools or, or don't feel comfortable using a drill or anything like that, just go to the craft store or hardware store and find a couple of drawer poles and just use some super glue on the sides would work easily as well. But I just tie the rope in knots on either end there and then just pull it tight against, the, as you saw, I pulled it through to help that knot get really tight and then just cut off the excess. And then I just repeat the same process on the other side. After I got my handles on and picked this tray up, I was instantly in love. I think this is going to be so fun to style. I love how this turns out. I think that it is such a solid piece, you guys. It's not flimsy at all. And I've seen these in different craft stores. I mean, look how cute it is standing up like this. Like, I just think it is so cute. Uh, but I've seen these in craft stores go for like lots more than it cost me to make this. And it was took a little bit of time, but it is a piece that is going to be a staple for me for years to come and I am so excited to get to style it in different ways and come up with different places to put it. I would love to know down in the comments what you guys think of this one and if this is something that you would attempt. If you're like me and have quite a few of these little house shapes from Dollar Tree and are trying to come up with different DIYs to do with them, here's a unique take on one. So this is from the Fairy Garden section at Hobby Lobby. It says $3.99 on there, get it when it's 40% off and we're only just using maybe like six inches of it. It's very long as you can see. I got it because I thought it would be kind of fun to use in some tiered tray projects or something that you might just need a little picket fence for. But I'm just using my wire snippers just to kind of snip that the wires are very thin. It's very easy to cut through. And then I'm just going to use some E6000 and hot glue because I really want a firm bond on this. And so I'm just using the both of them. And I'm just putting them on one of those little pickets there. And then you'll kind of see I place it towards the bottom and kind of, uh, you want it definitely flush with the bottom though, because you don't want this to pull it forward since we're adding weight onto it. So you wanna make sure that the bottom of your fence matches up with the bottom of the house. And I'm just holding that until that hot glue takes that immediate hold. And while I'm doing that, I'm just one-handedly trying to put some hot glue and some E6000 on the other picket. And I'll just do the same thing on the other side. I bend it in so that way it's gluing it onto there and then you have this cute little picket fence on this house. Now I wanted to make it like a birdhouse, so I'm just taking one of my sponge tools from Dollar Tree, I put it in some black paint, and I'm just doing a couple test runs with it here on some paper to make sure it's making a good size circle. I don't want a, like excess amount of glue on there or anything, so I'm just kind of going for it. You can kind of see I decided I want a little more paint and I just kind of clean it off there and make sure that it's making a good circle and then you just go for it. You just pick a spot, put it down, kind of twist it back and forth to get that really good circle shape. This is definitely something if you wanted it to look like a true bird house that you could drill the hole through there, you could hand put it on there, you could cut something out with your Cricut, however you want to get that on there, but it definitely makes it look like a, a little bird house now. So I'm just going around the edge of all of the edges here with the remainder of that black paint. This is just adding a little more detail to it, kind of making those um, different little edges uh, stick out a little bit more, kind of just a little bit more embellishment there, which I really do like how it ends up looking on that. So here's our cute little house. It's all coming together. I think it's just looking so cute, but I really want there to be some plants in where this fence is. So I'm just putting a little bit of styrofoam just to kind of help uh, hold what I'm gonna put in there. So I just glue that down with some hot glue 
And then comes the fun part of getting whatever little scraps of um, plants that you have, or if you have a sprig or something that you wanna use, a pick from Dollar Tree. This is just some leftover boxwood that I have from Walmart. Uh, I love this stuff, I use it in a lot of projects, so I always have a bunch of this on hand, but this is just one that I already taken a bunch of pieces off of. I'm just kind of taking some smaller pieces of it and using some hot glue to get it stuck to that styrofoam piece. And that styrofoam is kind of just like a filler like it so that way we don't have to put so much stuff in there So it's kind of taking up some space But this is where it comes in really good handy here is I'm just putting some glue on the bottom and I'm going to put some Spanish moss in there So that's going to Camouflage that styrofoam under there and it's also going to add a different texture in there I just think it looks really cute, but I do pay attention to getting it kind of slid all around. I use my little popsicle stick or the little tools I have there just to kind of slide it from the top of the fence and the bottom of the fence to get it all the way around your um, little block of styrofoam. And honestly, if you wanted to put the styrofoam down first and kind of put the Spanish moss around it and then do your fence, I think you'd be okay. This was just kind of, I was just kind of doing it as I went along. So this is kind of the order that I did it in, but I think that would be okay. You definitely would just want to glue your uh, plants in um, last. And then I'm just, I have this cute little bird that I had made in one of my spring videos last year. So I just thought it was super cute. So I'm just putting a little dot of glue on there to kind of bring home the fact that this is a little birdhouse. This is his home and he has like the best lawn on the block, I tell you. <laughs> I think it looks really cute and it's just kind of something fun and different to do with these little birdhouse shapes. I mean, you could embellish this in any different way. So hopefully you have fun when you make yours, but I just thought that that little bird there was so cute and with that little hole that we put on that center piece of the slat of wood there it really does just drive home that it's a birdhouse and he does have the cutest little yard you could put in some little like flowers if you want I mean you could really just use your imagination or go as basic as you want either way I think it's going to turn out really cute what do you guys think of this one for this project, I am using some scrapbook paper I have that looks like little seed packets, as well as this little wooden block that I have from Dollar Tree. This would also be a perfect project that you could do with the little squares on the back of the Dollar Tree calendar. I, these little seed packets just have a different size. They're a little bit bigger, and so I like the size a little bit more, but if you don't have this exact scrap paper, I'm just giving you an idea of something else you can use and another idea for those Dollar Tree calendars. So now I'm just going to paint the background of this, this really mossy green color. I just love this color for spring this year. And I just go around the whole thing and paint all the sides and everything. And then I'm just using my favorite purple glue stick. Guys, I buy this stuff when it goes on clearance at back to school. I literally buy it by the dozens. I love this glue. It's perfect for crafting. So after I get a very liberal amount of the purple glue on there, I am just going to place this down and then I just kind of like lay it out with my fingers a little bit there. And then I am going to get my little brayer and just kind of roll this all over it, make sure that it is nice and adhered there. And then you can also go over it with some Mod Podge, that way it will protect it. And then of course to distress things, because that's what I like to do here, I go around all of the edges with a little bit of antiquing wax, just very little amount on the little uh, chip brush there, which came from Dollar Tree. And then after I go around all of the edges, I make sure there's very little in my brush. I kind of go over those edges first to kind of even empty my brush out more. And then I go over the front of this seed packet to kind of make it have a little bit more of an aged look as well. And then I took a beaded garland that I already had and just tied onto the end of this. I love the little look of beads kind of draping down from a tiered tray, so I thought that would be perfect. It's not one that I made, it's just one that I had already and just tied it onto the end of it. But I think this turns out super cute. I'm excited to see what it looks like on our tiered tray. Are you guys on Instagram? If you are, I would love if you would come and find me. I am Farm Charm Chic over there. I'll leave a link down in my description box so you can easily find me. But come and see what I'm working on. I post there quite a bit. I like to show you things that I'm working on or when I have videos ready. It's just another place to stay in touch. So if you do come find me, remember to send me a DM and say hi because I do love meeting new friends.
I'm taking these two little signs that I got in the crafter square at Dollar Tree and I'm just removing the twine from each of them and then on one of them I just want to cover the holes so I'm trying this little method of using some hot glue in there and just kind of scraping that up you can use spackling whatever you would like to do to cover in those holes in fact if you decided you didn't want to that's up to you and then I just have this beaded garland that I also got at Dollar Tree and I am just running a bead of hot glue around the edge here you can see and then I'm just going to lay these beads one by one all the way around the the perimeter of this oval. Now I was one bead short from having this completely come together. So you could space this accordingly or just kind of measure it out in the beginning. I did have some extra beads. So you may need two strands to do this if you really want to be exact with it. And you can just kind of see that bead fit perfectly in there. And then I just go around the inside of it with some hot glue to help make sure these are all adhered really well. On the top layer, I'm just putting some glue around the whole perimeter here, and then I'm just going to turn this over and set it on top of all of those beads there, and then the beads are sandwiched between these two little oval signs. Now, yeah, I can use these little same beads from Dollar Tree, but I had some bigger ones that I wanted to use, a little bit chunkier beads, so it's up to you what size of beads or how you want to do your feet on here, but you want something to kind of rise this up off your surface, so I'm just using some hot glue to glue these in. I just kind of space them accordingly. Now I just paint mine a white color. You can stain it whatever you want to do. And I am just taking my emery board and roughing up the front part of all those beads that are exposed there. And then I'm just going to dry brush some mineral chalk paint on there. And I also go over with some white to kind of give it a little whitewash look over that distressing. I love how the texture and the detail came out in this one. This just screams farmhouse to me. I think it is so cute and it's perfect. It's like a staple piece that you'll use all year long in a lot of different decorating. And it's just a cute way to kind of display a little vignette. This is such a fun DIY and it can be made with all Dollar Tree products. So I'm using this welcome sign, one of these wood round signs, and then this tile piece. I love these tile pieces from Dollar Tree. Now this is actually inspired by a piece that I saw Brenda from Rustic and Lace make in the five under five challenge. I'll leave a link to her video so you can see how cute her project is that she made, or I'll leave a photo of it here so you can see, but it totally inspired me that I wanted to make something similar out of the, I had all of these pieces that I wanted to do. So I'm just cutting this tin piece. It's not really tin, it's just like a plastic. I cut it down to fit the circular shape of that sign. When you're gluing it on here, be careful because that is plastic. It will radiate that heat and become hot. So I'm just using my brayer to make sure that that gets adhered to the wood piece for my sign. I love these tile pieces. The, the blue color is a new color that Dollar Tree has had. And so I'm really excited to kind of work with this one. Now I was showing you there that I had a little piece of where the edge of the tile was that hit the top of my sign. And so I'm just, that's where I place the top of the sign because I'll cover it up with a bow. Now I'm giving this a very aged look with some antiquing wax and a baby wipe. And I'm just kind of pushing it all over. I wanted this to look extremely aged in farmhouse. So really this step would be completely optional. So now I'm just removing the hanging twine on this welcome sign. Just be careful when you're doing this because I felt it kind of like wobble a little bit, almost like it would break in half. So just be really careful removing that. You could even cut it off would be easier. And I started putting some antiquing wax on with a baby white because I wanted it to have that dark brown color, but it was kind of not giving the coverage that I wanted. So I just went into a method of using a brush to adhere it with and then, or to apply it with, and then I did to take a chip brush with some white chalk paint on it to kind of make it pop that three-dimensional look honestly I don't feel that that added too much to it so you could probably skip that step as well but I'm just using some hot glue and then I am just lining it up to where those letters all fit onto my sign and I'm using that line that's provided on the tile to kind of make sure that I get it straight now this twine came from the nautical line at Dollar Tree this year and I have loved it this is rope not twine though they did have twine which is really cute. That's what Brenda ended up using on her sign. But I'm just taking this rope and I'm just going to glue all around the edge to kind of give this a finished, more finished look. Um, I just thought it kind of added a, a little something to it, something extra. It was just there and I thought it was really cute. So I'm just using a little bit of glue on the edges and then I do work in little segments as you can see here and I'll place that glue down and then just gently just make sure you don't burn your fingers with that glue. Um, this would be a perfect project to wear your little silicone finger caps uh, for and I think I kind of use them here and there throughout this. When I get around uh, all the way around the sign I just cut that excess off and then just glue it down there and you can see I'm using my little silicone finger cap there. And now I need some greenery so I just took one of these 
these little sprigs from Dollar Tree and cut it up so I had a couple of pieces to go on either side of my sign there. And then what I decided is I needed a bow and I have this burlap ribbon and this would be completely optional and I know Dollar Tree sells burlap ribbon. You could even just use jute twine. But I decided to make a little bow here just by making a loop out of the burlap there and then just some tails. You can kind of watch what I'm doing. And I just fold that little bow over and then I fold the tails to kind of tie all together here because I wanted those tails to kind of hang downwards rather than out of the sides of the loops if that I think that makes sense. Um, and you can see I just tie it off with a little piece of twine because we'll cover that up in a minute. And on these little sprigs of greenery, I tie them with twine too because I thought that would be the easiest to make sure that they don't come falling off of there. And I just have to glue one piece on rather than four pieces. So in my mind, that made sense. And then I just put a little bit of glue there and tie that bow. Now you can see I did dovetail those. And when I glue my ribbon down, I kind of pull those little tails down so they I do have more of a downward motion. And I just glued a little hanging piece onto the back. But I think this turned out absolutely darling. How cute would this be on a front door or hanging on a porch somewhere? I think it is so cute. What do you guys think of this? These little mini charcuterie or cutting boards from Dollar Tree are darling. They're in their crafting section. I'm also using a crate and then a dowel, but you could also use a plunger handle if you want to grab everything from Dollar Tree. Now, these are the exact perfect size to fit on the sides of one of these crates, and I thought this would make a darling little box. So I'm just using some wood glue on the sides of my crate here, and I'm just going to glue both of those charcuterie boards onto the side of my little crate there so we can make our little box. I like to take my little box I set up up on the table to make sure it has a flat bottom and kind of use my fingers to kind of zhuzh those little charcuterie boards around to make sure all of the lines end up uh, even and everything. And then I just put some wood glue on my dowel and I just carefully slide that in between those. And then I just use a wipe to wipe any excess wood glue off. And then I just kind of press it to make sure everything is good. So I take some little half beads now and I'm just using a little bit of super glue and the wood glue and I'm gluing those on the outside part of where my dowel is. It's going to look like it's covering a little nail head or something. I thought it would be a really cute contrast, completely optional if you decide not to do this part. I haven't yet seen any half beads at Dollar Tree. If you guys have seen anything like that, I would love for you to let me know down in the comments. I do get mine on Amazon. I'll put a link to those down below, but I'm excited and hopeful that Dollar Tree will hopefully come out with something like that fairly soon. I did clamp this together, but I don't think that you would have to do that. I just left it for, to dry for about 30 minutes, but I think without the clamp, you would be fine. But now I'm going to go ahead and paint this. And at first I decided just to paint the entire thing white and kind of start from there and kind of look at it and see what I wanted to do with it. If I wanted to add contrasting colors or do a pattern or anything like that. So just give this a spray paint, or if you just want to use chalk paint, however you want to get this painted, you'll just do your choice. When I did get it all painted white, it was very stark and it needed something. So I thought I would go around all of the edges and give kind of that black farmhouse look to it. I thought this was really cute. It took a little bit of patience just to make sure I didn't get black paint spilled over onto the white. Of course, you would have to go back and touch up if you did that. And then just very carefully, I painted those little half beads as well as the handle on it also. In the end, I really love how this turns out with the two-tone and I'm really glad that I took the time to do this because it really does kind of make this piece. Now, the sides are a little bit plain and so you can embellish them however you want or you can leave them. I'm just showing you what I did with mine. So this step is completely optional. I do uh, use a couple or just one of the chalk couture little stencils here. So when you use chalk couture, you just kind of put it on a little fuzzing mat there. It just kind of makes that stencil not as sticky so it's not going to tear your paint or anything up. And then you just use chalk paste that they sell and you just kind of put that over with a squeegee it's very much like screen printing when you pull back that the design is revealed and it looks really cute check my description box for more information on chalk couture if you have any questions i'll be happy to answer them for you but just know that you're going to use whatever means you have available to you to embellish yours so it does not have to be like mine this is just meant to be inspiration now i sanded the edges and then i took a little bit of black paint on a baby wipe and i just am running my finger over all of the edges on this and for some reason this is what really made the piece to me i'm not really sure if it just gave it like a defining something or made it look like enamel or what it was but i I really, as I started this, I wasn't sure I was gonna like it and I fell in love as I was doing this. I thought it really, really made the piece. So inside and out, I just go over all of the edges and then I even decided to go over the crate, which I wasn't really sure about, but I am so glad that I did because I do like the definition that it gives and like how it turns out. 
Now, if this is not your style or you're not loving how this looks, obviously skip this step, but it's totally my style and I think it really just screams farmhouse and I love it. Remember to subscribe if you're liking the projects that you're seeing today. These are some of my most favorite farmhouse projects. The next one that I do is my absolute Dollar Tree favorite of all time. This is very close though. I love how this turns out. So I'm gonna show you from a different couple of angles here, depending on your decor or where you wanna set this in your house, you can set it sideways. It looks super cute at an angle or straight on. Either way with a little plant, you could even stick whatever you wanted in there besides a plant. I love how this turns out and I think literally this is one of my favorites. I think it is absolutely beautiful. This DIY turns out so cute. Dollar Tree has these little nesting boxes in their crafting corner and I'm using two of those and then I'm just using a wooden dowel or you can pick up a plunger at Dollar Tree and just use the handle on the plunger. It's made out of wood. You can use that for your wooden dowels and it's sometimes a lot cheaper than getting them like at the craft store or hardware store. Now I have just cut my dowel down to the size that I want my little tiered tray to be and which I think this is about seven inches that I did and I'm just using some hot glue and wood glue. Now I wanted to glue my dowel more towards the back of the box because I want more items to be able to fit in the front when I decorate with it because this will be in a space where you won't really see the back of it. So keep in mind if you want to decorate it all the way around you might want to center your dowel a little bit more. Now just using some hot glue and wood glue I just do the same process to get that top nesting box glued on. Here's just a bonus little hack for you. If you ever find little napkin rings, keep in mind of what you might be able to do with them. This particular napkin ring came from Hobby Lobby. The little pot came from Dollar Tree. I'm just using it to stuff in my little tiered tray. It looks almost like a little topiary there, even if you see the hole in the middle. But those little napkin rings, if you ever find those at any stores that you're traveling to, keep in mind of different things you can do with them on tiered trays because they're a lot of fun. Dollar Tree has recently had a lot of these wooden beads. You get them in a pack of 125 and it comes in all sorts of different sizes. So I'm just going to make a little beaded garland because I love hanging beaded garland from different things. It adds a lot of texture and I just think they're really cute. So I'm just doing a little pattern with a couple of small, then I do the next size up and then the biggest size. And I just repeat that pattern throughout the whole length of this beaded garland. If you're not lucky enough to find these beads at your Dollar Tree yet, keep watching for them, but I always have a link in my description box for ones that I like to buy on Amazon, so just keep that in mind if you can't find those. I am just using a galvanized tag that I also got at Dollar Tree, and I will just loop over my twine and feed that little beaded garland through there, so that way it can tie easily onto. You can kind of tie that on however you want. That's just how I chose to do it. And then all I'm going to do here is just take the end of my twine feed it up through a couple of the beads and cut it off so that way you don't have that little piece hanging out. You could always make a tassel for the other end of this or instead of the tag, I decided just to tie mine off at the other end because it will be resting inside of the tiered tray and you won't see it. So I just tie a knot with that and then I like to use a little bit of hot glue just to secure that knot. And I mean just ever such a small little daub of hot glue on there just to kind of make sure that knot is not going to come untied or anything in the future. Now I'm using some of these little rub-on transfers from Dollar Tree. These are some of their new farmhouse line that they have which are super cute. I'm just taking the word well and I just cut it down from that sheet because I can use all of those others and other projects that I have. And I like to just use a little wooden craft stick. These uh, particular rub-on transfers go on very smooth and very easily. If you saw me use the foiled ones, they I have not had luck with those, uh, but these are very simple. You can see I just peel that back and it just comes right off and transfers that word welcome on there. And it's just something really cute to place in your tiered tray. I love to collect different types of coasters to use for DIY projects. I found these darling little farmhouse coasters at Hobby Lobby. I'm just gluing a couple of the tumbling tower blocks onto the bottom and it makes a cute little stand for my tiered tray. This little welcome sign turns out super cute there and here is everything put together. I love how this turns out. It is so cute, it is very farmhouse and it is a perfect way to use those wooden beads and those little wooden nesting boxes from Dollar Tree. I have this pack of wood slats from Dollar Tree. I think they come with six in a package, plus a couple of wooden boxes and then a couple of just wooden squares. So I'm just gonna make a pillar, I guess, or a column, plant stand, whatever you wanna call it. But I'm just gonna make a rectangular box out of these wooden flat slats. I'm not sure really what you would call them other than that anyway. So you can just see I'm using a combination of wood glue to make it for a long-term hold and then some hot glue to give that short-term hold. 
And I am just taking a couple of dowels and I cut them into pieces to give a little bit more surface area for the glue to kind of adhere to. And that's just going to make it a little bit more sturdy and hold its shape a little bit more rather than just having the edge glued together. So I'm going to take the box here and I'm going to take the lid off and turn the lid upside down. And I'm going to glue the edge of the box and turn it over. This is kind of give, going to give us a little bit of architectural element on the pillar. So you can see I'm just going to glue that down. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other box. And then once I get that done, I'm going to take those flat square pieces and I'm going to glue the lid of the box to those. So you can just kind of watch closely what I'm doing here. So after I get those glued together and my rectangular box is pretty sturdy and dry, it takes about a half an hour to get it to a really sturdy point, then I'm just going to glue each end of this to each little um, architectural end, I guess we'll call it, that I have made. And so you can kind of see it start to come together here. And I just kind of spin it because that glue does give you a little bit of working time to get it so it is... Um, straight and everything and right now I'm not using any hot glue I'm just using the wood glue because I'm gonna set and leave this overnight just to get a really good hard cure to it you do want to maybe have a wet cloth I use some baby wipes around to kind of wipe that glue off because it does drip quite a bit so after this dries after a day I go in with some paint you can choose whatever paint color you want to paint yours I wanted to go for a very rustic um, Kind of like obviously farmhouse but, but kind of just uh something that maybe you had found a piece of something from an old farmhouse or old barn or something that you had taken into your house to use as a plant stand so i wanted to start with the white base and then go in and add distressing from there so i give this two really good coats of my white chalk paint then i take my emery board and i am just going around every single edge every single corner and sanding it really good i even take each of those corners and give it kind of a, a more of a round shape to it then i take some antiquing wax and i just do my dry brushing all over it i get a little bit heavier the further that i go just kind of depends on how you want it after i let that dry completely i do go back in with some more of the white and dry brush over the top of that so it's not so harsh and it kind of softens it i did go in with a little bit of elephant chalk paint also to kind of give it another little dimension there but you can see how it looks together here i'm excited to put this with all of my plants and my little uh, trinkets different things you know just kind of style it really good but I'm really happy with how this turned out and for just a couple of bucks to get a really good looking I didn't have to cut anything out of wood I think it looks great I would like to thank you so much for joining me for today's compilation video. I hope that you enjoyed all of these DIYs. If you had a favorite, let me know down in the comments. I always love to hear which ones you guys like the best. Thank you so much for watching today. I'll see you next time. Happy crafting! If you like the video that you just saw and you want to keep crafting together, here's another video that you might enjoy. And as always, remember to like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.